better dig this next number. Ow! Take it! <laughs> In the late 40s and early 50s, New York City was pulsing with the beat of a new music, bebop. It was an original African-American sound that was changing the rhythm of the city's culture. In that era when your life is a movie, that was the music of the movie. You could walk over to the five spot and hear Thelonious Monk and John Coltrane. That was the house band. That music was making an expression of the times, the way that the, the painting was, the statement about the time, a rhythm about the time uh, that was very inspiring. Come on. Musicians, painters, and writers migrated to New York in search of new ways to express a discontent with the limits of post-war life. One of these was a young aspiring writer named Jack Kerouac. He didn't want to be just another writer. He wanted to be a jazz musician who played the typewriter. The jazz player that meant the most to Kerouac was Charlie Parker. Kerouac was picking up on the fact that the cadences were like spoken language. They could use those rhythms in writing. So what Kerouac was doing was taking that same kind of new rhythmic beat into his prose and his poetry. It's the beat generation, it's stay at. It's the beat to keep, it's the beat of the heart. It's being beat and down in the world and like old time lowdown. And like in ancient civilizations, the slave boatmen rowing galleys to a beat. Kerouac began picking up on the word beat drawn from a common vocabulary of Times Square. Meaning in those days, exhausted, worn out, maybe homeless, maybe up all night, uh, not wanting to be hassled. It didn't mean beaten. It didn't mean the beat of drums. It didn't mean uh, hearing the beat man snap, 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 all that, the, all that hippy-dippy uh, uh, stereotype you get on the mass media. It just meant emotionally and intellectually exhausted and wide open and maybe receptive to some other uh, awareness, some more deeper perception. Kerouac and Ginsberg banded together to form a loose group of poets and writers known as the Beats. I think what attracted uh, us was that everybody was somewhat interested in literature, poetry, art, and to define some kind of new vision of America. Sal, we gotta go and never stop going till we get there. Where are we going, man? I don't know, but we gotta go. Across America, Kerouac began writing a novel in his mind, a beat novel, set to the rhythms of bebop that would discover for a new generation the American dream of a land without limits. The only people to live are the mad ones, the ones who are mad to live, mad to talk, mad to be saved, desirous of everything at the same time. The ones who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but burn, burn, burn like fabulous yellow Roman candles exploding like spiders across the stars. Now the bellhop tears keep flowing and the death clutch just in black Well, they've been so long alone in the street and they'll never, they'll never look back and they'll be so long and they'll be back Well, they're so lonely Well, they're so lonely and they're afraid to die Elvis was a crossroads personality. 
He was a country hick with dreams of Tinseltown, who offered the ultimate American dream. To be outside, but not lonely. Free, but not poor. Naughty, but nice. Address unknown, Elvis Presley was born in 1935 in East Tupelo, Mississippi, a sharecropper's town. Struggling to make ends meet, Elvis and his family lived in a designated white house in a black neighborhood. It was a symbol of the post-war South, segregated and racially mixed. After the war, as machines took the jobs from the southern cotton fields, the Presleys moved to Memphis, Tennessee, a manufacturing center and a magnet for rural blacks and whites seeking a better life. Somebody knocking on my door. Memphis was also a music town, and the soul of the music scene was on Beale Street. Beale Street was like a college of higher learning for me. It was more like a, a little city within itself. I guess it was about four blocks maybe, and everything seemed to be going on within those four blocks. There was three movie uh, places, and you had the Palace Theater where they had float shows once a week. A place called the One Minute that had the best chili in the world. <laughs> there was musicians, the best musicians, traveling musicians, you get a chance to see them. I'm talking about black musicians because this was, you know, it wasn't integrated at that time. So you could walk in the park and some of the best musicians would stop and sometimes just practice in their homes. They'd find little corners in Bill Street to sit there and practice. Good morning to you, my friend. From the home of colorful old Beale Street, the place where the police began in Memphis, Tennessee. WDRA was an all-black operated station. I went over there seeking a job. I said, I want to make a record and go on the radio. And he laughed and called Mr. Ferguson, which was the general manager. They said, can you write us a jingle? Can you get a jingle? Yeah. Hepticon, show is good. Hepticon, show is good. Hepticon, show is good. You can get it anywhere in your neighborhood. D.B. King became both a DJ and a performer on WDIA, the station with enormous power and influence known as the mother station of the Negroes. Now here it is, three o'clock in the morning. 